Now we know how to use relative units of measure. We can now apply them to our project in place of some of the fixed pixel sizes. This is a big step towards our site being responsive as it allows our content to be more fluid and fit the available screen space. Rather than being too small or cut off, like we've seen with our products earlier. We already have the body section at 80%, which we see at the top here, by setting it to be 80% of the available viewport width. We can also do the same with the sidebar and main sections too. There are a few ways which we can approach this. If we scroll down to the main and the side section, which we see just here, Currently we have the main section at 608 pixels and the sidebar at 270. We could go ahead and make up some new sizes, such as setting the main to be 70% and the sidebar at 30%. Then this would take up the full width of the body. Or we can convert what we already have. You will often see a calculation. So if we go ahead and add a comment in here, just to add this in. You will often see the conversion of target divided by context equals result. And this is how we can convert a pixel size to a fluid size, which means our sizes can then scale. And this is how it works in practice. So let's add a new comment just below. So first of all, the target is the current width we have of 680. We then divide this by the context, and the context is the 1000 pixels container, which we had originally for the body. And this works out at 0 0.68. The result of 0 0.68 is then multiplied by 100 to get a percentage of 68%. So this is how this looks. Since we had a nice round 1000 pixels body, the calculation is pretty simple but it's still useful to know how to convert this for less rounded numbers. If we save that, over to the browser and then refresh, we don't see any difference because the size is just the same, but rather than a pixel value, it's now a percentage. Back over to the CSS, we can also do the same with the aside section. Again, because this is based on a thousand pixel container, this would then make this a nice round 27%. Change this, refresh, and as we'd expect, there isn't much of a difference. Content should now be more fluid as we switch between one, two, and three products as we restretch the browser. Currently, we have three products alongside each other. If we make it a little smaller, it goes down to two. And then even smaller, it now goes on to its own row. And if we make this smaller screen, just like that, we now see the products are now stacked on top of each other. Now this leads us on to this product section. We also want these individual products to resize too. Again, we could calculate these values exactly, or we could select an appropriate size, such as 30%. So over to the product, rather than this fixed size of 210 pixels, let's set this to be 30%, leaving three on each row. And let's refresh and see the difference. Okay, back to full size. We have our free products. And then we can see as we resize the browser that these free products are also getting narrower and wider as the screen changes. If we make this really small and then scroll down to the products, this does, however, cause some new problems, like you can see here. Some elements can flow onto more lines such as this text description. So this is longer than this one here, meaning that the height of the product div is different to the rest. So while we could go ahead and fix this by applying various CSS hacks, there is also a different approach we can use. And this is to change layout for different size devices using media queries. And we'll look at how to apply these next.